Uh, hello, my friends, and welcome to Open Studio D. I'm Vlad Duchev, and today we're going to talk about something very important. I will give you some glimpse of uh, my course, online course of oil painting that I'm working on. And we're going to talk about values, the importance of values, how to study values, and what are the values. You know, a lot of talk. You know, there's a lot of talk about values, and uh, not many explanation what is actual values and how it. You know, importance of values. So this is what we're going to talk today. So let's roll. Here we go. Today we're going to talk about values. But before we start talking about values, and I hope. This video will be no longer than 25 minutes, so I have a timer and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna talk really fast. And to be honest, this is how I talk anyway. <laughs> so um, if you need to slow me down, just put the description slow down, so next time I will slow down. All right, anyway, not to waste the time. Uh, so, uh, three main points of um, painting um, that I teach on my course, uh, one of the, one of the pillars. And those three main points are the shapes, the colors, color mixing, and the third one is values. Uh, the painting must be defined in our mind to uh, register what we see. And this is very simple. Now let me explain you what it is, because you may ask me like, well, what are you talking about? All right, in order to understand why in the world, sometimes we can look at the picture, or not the picture, the image, or not the image, the painting. <laughs> Why we can look at the painting and watch the painting for hours, uh, despite the fact that we know this painting for like really from A to Z, from you know from every corner, uh, every square inch of that painting we know, but we still we're going back to that painting and we're just you know watching that or not watching, but staring at uh, staring at that painting and just it's pleasing us why right and why some paintings would just you know, look at the paintings for several seconds and was like okay done and when you see it next time you don't want to even look at that painting because it's already that's already done and i want to use the word it's it's basically it's registered in your mind so in order to understand this and then we come to the shapes the color mix and the values uh you, we will probably, you know, understand much, much better. So the process of receiving the image and processing image is very simple. It's just the physics, right? So when we look at the painting, the light that should the painting comes back to us as a reflection of the surface of the painting, right? And it goes through our eyes and then transforming into a signal to our mind all this information is going to our mind and our mind is raising, racing like crazy, working with this puzzle and trying to put this puzzle all together. But this is exactly what's happening in our mind. So mind is actually receiving all this information and you know, the question of what it's receiving. It's receiving the shapes, it's receiving the colors and they're receiving the values. Uh, and receiving some other information when there is a tag like price tag you know, there is another <laughs> process. Can I afford it or cannot I afford it? And so on and so on. But the when we look actually at the painting, this is what we're receiving. The information is going to our eyes, through our eyes. The eyes is just the channel to bring everything to our mind, right? To, you know, the process. So our, our mind is receiving the shapes, the colors, and the values, uh, and start actually racing like crazy inside, trying to pull first the shapes. What is this shapes? What this shape? Let's say we're looking at um, uh, at the cube, right? Just a cube sitting on the table. That's a whole painting. So our our mind is receiving this and saying, okay, that's a cube. Let me find in in my mind, in the memories, uh, the cube. Find it. Okay, link. Oh, that's a cube. So information set to register in our mind and sending back to us to our processing. This is a cube. Next process, okay, this is, uh, let's say it's a black and white, right? So we kind of, mine is kind of racing, okay, there is no co any colors, this is a black and white, registered black and white, sending to us in the process. This is black and white, and this is 2D, even though this is, uh, looks like 3D, because the values are showing 3D, um, kind of, um, uh, how to say it, um, 
So we tr what we're trying to, when we paint, we're actually using 2D surface, right? That's just one canvas, but we try to get the illusion of 3D subject that we paint. So the values actually helping to render it from 2D to 3D. Sometimes I call values as actually 3D renderer. Um, that's a value, that's the purpose of the value, and I will show you, all right? So this is how the process is working. And then when everything is registered in our mind and giving the answer, okay, this is a painting of a cube, black, black and white, you know, maybe values is not, right, your brain is telling you, this is the values, blah, blah, blah. No, you, everything is all together. This is a painting. Now, why we can look at the painting for hours and another painting we just, you know, glimpse and just we're done. This is another subject. This is interesting subject. Please let me know if you want to jump on that subject. I will, you know, do recording of this because that's very interesting. This is how you should paint, keeping in mind what's happening, what's the process happening, and what do you need to do, where you have to stop, uh, and where you have to continue. All right, a different subject. We're going to back to shapes, color mixing, and values. And today we're not going to talk about shapes, which is consists of the this is a main platform for uh, composition. Uh, basically, that's another subject. This is on my course. Or if you want me to talk um, you know, on YouTube, just let me know. I will shoot just a small episode about this because it's not going to be fair for people who actually I mean, will be buying course. And the color mixing is another subject. And then values. So we're going to talk about values. We're going to talk about the importance of value how to understand value and how to study value all right so those three things what is value for understanding the value um how to see the value and how to study the value and how to see it basically the importance of value so let's let's repeat it so what is value first then importance of value and then third one is how to study value so let's jump because the time is rolling really rolling all right, so let me uh, let let's talk about what is value. All right, uh, what is value? So value is very simple. Uh, value cannot be a, a as a standalone um, point or item. Right, the value is actually the color mixing process, color mixing uh, definer. Um, why it's color mixing definer? Because the value is there is not there is nothing without color. You need to have, you need to have a mixing or color mix, right? You need to mix to mix the value. So you're mixing basically color, but at the same time you're mixing the value. So the, what is the value? Let's go back to value. The value is basically the scale uh, on a black and white scale. It's darkest part and the lightest part. The lightest part will be your probably your white canvas, and the darkest part will be, you know, your darkest color on that canvas. That's a value. When you look at the <clears throat> scenery, you will you have to identify which is lightest of light, which is value number one. Sometimes it's flipped, number well, value number ten, and then the darkest part. That will be your darkest value, all right. And then everything in between will be the scale. So one of the scales that I can show you is is this. This is grayscale and value finder, which I strongly recommend. So basically, this is your white, the whitest one right here. And this is your darkest one. And this is all the values between. Now, this is in the black and the white. You can actually transfer this to the colors because everything that we have around surrounding us has a value. Every color has a value because we we'll see everything in three, three dimensional in 3D, right? Uh, so. If we see everything in 3D, there's a value, right? Because that's how value is pushing things away or bringing things close to you, foreground and the background. We'll talk about this. All right, so this is a value. Basically, this is intensity of the light of the color. So that's a scale of values, different values. Um, and I, I can tell you how to use this later on. So basically, the uh, value, what is value? It, it is the color intensity of the light or light intensity of the color. Intensity, I don't know, is it the right word? Uh, basically, how bright is the color? So basically, the color, as like a horse, has two riders on top of it, right? On the back. 
One is a color, it's a hue, you know, is it red, blue, or black, or brown, or yellow, whatever, whatever is the hue of the color. Now that same color has another writer, or that same horse has another writer, and that writer is a value. Is that red is light, lighter, or darker, or very dark, still in red, but it's darker red or lighter red. So when you're talking about lighter red or darker red, it's we're talking about value. When we're talking, this is a red, we're talking about color, right? And we say, okay, this is blue, that's a color. Oh, that blue is, what value of that blue? Okay, so we're talking about this scale. So imagine this is darkest blue, and this is the lightest blue, and then we're looking, we're trying to find the value of that blue, what you know, color, or light intensity, intensity of that color. Oh, how bright is that uh, blue, or red, or yellow, any colors, right? So two writers, uh, the color, the hue, and the actual value, how the bright that color is. So basically this is the value. Now, importance of value. Let me show you, let me show you some, some example, very, very quick. Let's go to this and let's say, let's say we have, I want to divide this and we have a circle, the ball, oops, sorry for that. Let's say we have a circle like this and here's a table, right? The light is going for, through here. Now, this is right now, this is right now two dimensional, right? That's two dimensional, just a circle on the line, as you can see, as you can see right here. Now, color is black because I'm using black uh, graphite uh, pencil. And now we're gonna apply the value. So the value will be, let's say, if light is shooting from this, so here I will have this spot of light. Now this will be a little bit darker because this is, you know, going down to the darkest part. Now this will be a little bit darker. This will be a little bit darker. Sorry, I, it's not convenient to stand like this and, and draw. Now this will be even a little bit more darker because it's we're wrapping uh, th that ball. And here will be the line of really dark because that's in a, in a shadow, right? And I can do that this just to define. And we're gonna clean something. Something like this, right? And we're gonna put the shadow, and the shadow will be like this. And we're gonna isolate the something like this. And I'm gonna do, I mean, we can do this in the back just to isolate our ball, something like this. And we can take, actually, a lot of times what I do, I extend this, cover it, here a little bit more. A little more, and here's your highlight and here's your highlight and then you will have a little bit of highlight right here reflection from the table but not much okay all right now what happened so what happened we converted 2d by applying values and you can see you can see this is value number one that's the lightest right this is value number two, a little bit darker. This is value number three. This is value number four. It may be some value behind. So, but basically four main values. So we converted by applying the values, we converted 2D uh, painting or drawing into 3D. Illusion, not converting into 3D, but illusion to 3, uh, to 3D. And this is the, exactly the, uh, the reason why the values are very, very important because uh, the value is actually the renderer of 3D. Uh, and they're gonna push the background further and bring the, value, you know, bring the subjects in the foreground and create that 
atmospheric perspective. Uh, for example, if I if I want to draw, let me make small right here, as you can probably can see it right here. I can create. Let's say I want to create a you know forest. So this will be my forest. That will be mountains, and that will be another mountain, and then the lighter. So this will be my and applying dark, really dark, because it's a foreground. It's going to be value of this. This will be my forest with some modification. Now this will be a little bit behind. This is my value number two. Now behind, I will have just a touch. Maybe a little bit more of this value right here. And then mountains behind. And then something like this. And you can see this is a foreground, this is a middle ground, and this is background, and this is a sky, the lightest part. And we talking we can talk about light. Same with a cube. Let's say I'm gonna, you know, um let's say I want to take a cube and table and here's the light coming from this side let's say this will be darkest and again we're converting 2d to 3d now this will be value number two this will be a little bit lighter and this will be a little bit lighter than that now we just converted you want a shadow okay let's do the shadow and this will be the shadow and the shadow a little bit lighter and normally you want to identify the the lightest part so you want to bring this to dark something like this As you can see, we just converted 2D into 3D illusion of 3D. By what? By applying the value. I mean, this is the same color. This is black and white. I'm using just a pencil, black and white. But we just converted um, 2D in illusion of 3D. And that's importance of the value. The value basically will tell you what is the painting all about. The depth of the, uh, depth of the field the uh, atmospheric perspective, the shadows, the what is important, what is not important, because you're rendering that 3D, you're pushing it forward, and you, I mean, pulling it forward, or you're pushing it in the background. That's a value, all right? And that's importance of value. If you can knock out the composition, uh, the perfect composition, and bad values, that's why you look at the paintings and like, okay, I, I'm done, I registered, wrong. Uh, you can do perfect color mixing and the composition and bad values your your you know your compass your painting basically will be jumping it's it, mine cannot register it because it's wrong so the mind will register you know the mind will register basically wrong failure you know wrong painting because it's not going to tell you the value but you it will be registered boom, done register done don't look at that so that's importance of the uh, values. Now let's jump on subject number three because time is really rolling out. <laughs> how to study. So how to study the paintings. I mean how to study the values. And this will be my recommendation. This is how I'm teaching my students to understand the values and how to study. First you have to start from the, from the start, from the base. Black and white. Don't jump in colors. Black and white. You need to understand the values before you go into colors. All right. A uh, good thing is that we live in 2020, today is 22, 2022, uh, contemporary life, and we have these devices. And I know a lot of people, a lot of painters will say, Vlad, what are you talking about? Phone? You pay, you, you using phone? Duh. Uh, I'm using phone a lot uh, because I'm pretty sure, you know, I had a dream. I was talking to uh, Rembrandt and he said, Vlad, if I can only have the phone that I have you, that you have in your hands. I'm kidding, right? I'm not. Uh, but even Rembrandt will say, like, you know what? 
this is like wow yahoo i have a phone <laughs> i can convert and i will show you why right it's like what are you talking about all right so this is what i do all the time all the time and the more i practice the more i'm like released from this using it but i'm still sometimes not sometimes a lot of time i'm checking so let me show you this is basically this is the uh photo that i took uh I think it was in the Basque County, and I'm trying to work in studio, actually, um, this painting. I, I just love it. But what I will do, I will convert this. I will just click Edit, um, convert, Edit Lights. Let me see if I can actually edit it. And convert it to black and white. Now, I see the values. I don't, you know, the colors are not disturbing me. Uh, I'm looking actually only at the so shapes and values and that's important colors will come later on but this is what I'm looking I'm looking at the shapes and the values for example I'm looking at this right here and oops, so let me make it smaller value of this and value let's say of this horse right here that spot definitely this and this are the same value I think the this is actually a little bit darker uh, than this but if you compare to let's say so this will be number one they will be number one but what is number two I would guess this is number two right here all this is number two then this is and this is number three now number three here in the foreground and this portion let me change the color and this i cannot put this and this the same uh, because this is foreground this is a background so the value of this needs to be at four so this will be four so basically, uh, let me go back to another one and delete this. So basically, I'm looking at, at the black and white, uh, black and white version of this image, and I'm defining. Okay, so this will be probably my number. This will be this, and and again this and here, all this is value number one with small modification this will be darker so this will be number one and this will be number one but this will be a little bit lighter then number two will be probably this right here actually you know what let me change the color so you can see it this right here and maybe even here this this will be number two then here number three and then that's it and this is number the light will be number number four all right so basically four values uh, of this painting and then this is how you study so if you take um let's go back to let's go to gallery let's load some let's say this one right here in this image um, that's another image I will work on I see I already start working on it defining the value so this will be probably right here is the darkest value then this all this will be the second value um, this dark spot here dark spot let me change the color here and here dark spot I will define probably value same value as this and this uh, but this is this this is further and this is further so I have to push it away using the colors a little bit more bluish color and then this will be the highlight right here this will be my value let me use this color right here this is highlight right here you know highlights here highlights uh, here highlights here highlights this will be different values so I hope you understand the, the, how to work so basically you take the phone you just take the image and you work 
convert it to black and white and check the values. This is how the first, basically first step of how to study the values. You need to start seeing the values of the, you know, the scenery or whatever, break into values, not the colors. I know everybody wants to convert to colors like, wow, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful, but you need to paint that. And in order to paint that, you have to define shapes first, colors second, and then the values. I would probably put values number two instead of colors, but because the color is actually the writer, not the value is the writer of the color, color, color is, a, is a carrier of the value and the hue. But I would study the values first, just identify. I normally paint in three, no more than five values. I'm trying to stick to four values. That's, that's my, you know, research that most of the paintings, like the famous paintings, there's only four values, um, sometimes five, but mostly four. All right. So uh, tools number one, uh, my, my time is past already, but I'll keep going. All right. For those who wants to 25 minutes, turn it off. <laughs> I don't know. I'm kidding. Uh, let's keep going uh, because it's a very important. So use your phone, take the photo, move it to uh, black and white and identify your shapes and the values of those shapes. Keep it to uh, four values and I will show you how to actually switch some values into, you know, four main one. Uh, let's, let, uh, let's talk about this. So basically if you, if you find, look at the image and you see five values or let's say you see seven values. All right, let's say one value is you have to define this will be my number one this will be num number two this will be number uh number four and this will be number number three and number four but you have another three and those three are somewhere around your main values that you selected so all you have to do is just switch it to, so if this is another this is value number five i will paint it as value number four if this value is number six i'm gonna switch it to move it to number three if this value is number seven and it's right between this and this, I will see what I need for the painting and I'll switch it to my darkest or I move it to my value number two. You're basically switching. Yes, it's not what you see, but you want to stick to four or next five values. All right. And this is how you study. Now, how, how to practice. Let's move to practice. And I hope I'm not talking too fast and you, you know, keep, uh, understanding what I'm talking about I hope all right how to study um, the first one is very important uh, where's the pencil I uh, use just the pencil use just the black and white graphite pencil this is actually I love this one because it's not sharpie you can you can as you can see you can you can create let me switch to you can create you can create some masses right and that's what you need you need to create and then this is this is lighter right here and then this is lighter in lighter and then this is a little bit dark and this is dark and this is a, right here three values you can see three values right here all right uh, so that's important it's very important so use just one graphite so graphite pencil this is from artist loft uh, it has if you can see it actually has a big graphite inside you just insert if you're done you just press it and pu pull it more uh, sometimes I'm sharpening it to make sure it's rounded like this but this is my study uh, pencil I use this a lot uh, make sure it's not sharpie pencil so you you don't want it to see sharp edges you want to see a lot of times uh, a lot of times you study like um, sh you know study shapes and I'll show you let's say you want to paint you want to paint um, or you want to draw let me switch that same cube right so I'm not gonna draw the cube first so when I'm gonna start I will start doing this that's my one value that will be my second value and I'm painting I'm, I'm actually drawing it and this will be my lightest boom that's it. So you're not actually drawing something. You're studying the shapes. You, you curving the shapes with this. This is really good tools to have to, for studying the values, right? So you can see that this is three values. We just put 
value number one, value number two, and value number th number three. And if you want to put a shadow, you can put a shadow. And again, shadow, I'm going to do it like this. That's it. So the tools number one, just start uh, using pencil, uh, big pencil like this, not the Sharpie, um, just the values. If you want to, let me show you, uh, time is rolling. Let's say I want to uh, paint um, uh, forest, right? I'm gonna do it like this. This is my forest, this is my tree, like this, just, uh, just a shape, right? And here is my, and I'm, I'm trying to find the, my composition with the values, right? With just the values and then something lighter here, maybe darker, something darker here. This will be at the bottom and it will be darker. And again, I'm not something like this. I'm not sure what it is, but just, it just shapes. But I'm painting with the values. I make sure I'm drawing with values and I'm trying to define those shapes by values and see how they work. That pushing and not pushing the composition, everything. So values, 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 values. The pencil, number one. Uh, number two, uh, I will strongly recommend. This is a Faber Castell. Faber Castell, Faber Castell, Faber Castell. I don't know how to pronounce it right. It's FB, FC actually, uh, Faber Castell. Six pit artist pens. So basically, this is <clears throat> your markers in grayscale. So six markers from light, from lighter to darker. What I normally do, I will select my if I'm, you know, studying the values of the painting. Is it more on the darker side or more on the lighter side? If it's more on the lighter side, I will just remove this two and keep this four. If it's more on darker side, I will just remove this and keep this two. If it's mix, I will just remove in the middle. I will remove this and I will remove this and I will keep just four of this. Let's say <clears throat> let's say we're studying more on light, so I will remove this two and I will keep this and I'll do the same cube right here. Let's switch to cube. So I'll do this is my darkest and again this is the and it looks like if you can see this looks like a paintbrush. So basically I, what I will do, I will do this and this is more defined. It's not like a pencil, right? This will be number one. Then next one will be this. Actually, this is too dark. So let's move to this. And this is at the top. And you can do shadow with this. So this is really good because that will be getting you close to your color mixing. I love using this uh, markers, um, but you have to adjust it. So basically you will have to do uh, maybe select like darkest like this and then this two, uh, this two and the three. Let's let me show you in three. So the same cube, we're painting the same cube, just a smaller version. I'm just going to do a small one right here. So this will be my darkest right here. Now this will be my, this side, a little bit lighter. And this will be the lightest on top. Okay, same cube using same cube using three values uh, love these markers uh, highly recommend faber castell faber castell i don't know how to pronounce it uh, six markers for studying the values so this will be uh, tool number two uh, tool number three is and i using a lot 
And this is basically color pencil. I have a big set. It's the actual set number two that I'm already using. You can get a smaller one. And this is a great when you're converting from seeing values from black and white to colors. And that's a huge step. It's, you have to you have to really study. Uh, that will with a lot of frustration. Trust me, you will go through frustration, but you need to study if you're serious about learn, learning how to paint. Values is most the most most important thing, I think. Uh, composition is important because the composition is based on the shapes. Uh, color mixing is, is a you know color colors are the uh, carrier of the values. Important too, but I think the values is if if you learn the values, you know eighty percent is done. 20% is just the shapes and color mixing and everything else. Values are very, very important. Can emphasize more. So how to use this? Basically, this is a color pencils. And you can, um, right here, a lot of pencils. This is the second set. And again, how to use it? Let me show you. Now you're converting to, you're converting to um, color values, right? So let's say your uh, your let's stick with the cube. I'm not gonna start drawing because time is running out. Uh, let's say the same cube. It's uh, darker. So it's let's say cube is in red color, sitting on green table, and the background is kind of grayish, whatever. Uh, so what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take the darkest red for right now. I'm gonna mix it. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do uh, the first. I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to mix probably two colors together. And that's kind of mixing as well, right? Because you're mixing the colors. So let me show you. Uh, so I'm going to take this first and I'm going to define, I'm going to define my cube like this. Actually, this is a, this is a pastel pencils yeah I recommend just different not a pastel just different colors different um, diff, not a pastel just so this will be darkest part and I'm using two colors and then this will be the lightest probably right here And then one will be lighter right here. And it's sitting on the green table. So on the green table, this will be the shadow. This is the green, dark green. This will be the shadow. We're going to mix some other colors. Then this will be the rest of the table, the lighter. And this will be even lighter because the light is shooting from this point. And I'm going to mix it a little bit, something like this. This is a table and let's fix it. This is light, dark part right here. You can see it, it's a, yeah, it's a color pencil, uh, pastel pencils. And, and grayish color in the back. That's it. This is your study of in pen, in colors, uh, in color pencil. This is actually pastel. I grabbed the wrong wrong box. Uh, I recommend using just regular box, small like this, like maybe 10, 10 pencils. 
and you can do a lot of studies. Don't do, don't draw anything, just you know, render it as a shapes. So now you can take this one and you can switch to black and white. Let's switch it and you can see the values. Now let's switch back to color and this is the color. So this is how you study. And then from this point, you can move to actually oil painting or acrylic, whatever you use, uh, gouache, start mixing, but seeing the value in your color, right? This is, this is a practice. You need to practice, 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 and practice to get to when you see the value, right? Now, how to see it when you're painting? Uh, so the phone is number one. I you know, recommend using the phone just if you, even like right now you paint, what I can do is uh, I will go to my photo. I'll take an image of this. Here's the image. Here's the image of this drawing. And I'll just hit edit and I will go to black and white. And you go to saturation and you just go to 100 saturation. And this is your black and white. So you just check, okay, where I made the mistake um okay um uh, here's a mistake right here i can see and you can see it right here the spot i missed but i missed it all right so this is how you this is number one uh tools that i'm using for values you have it right uh let's say your um for some reason your phone died and you need something else i would recommend uh the grayscale this scale, that's the reason why they have the holes right here. So basically what you do, you look at your subject through this hole right here, through this hole, or this holes, or this holes, and you're moving it and you're trying to match whatever you see with the value right here. And it's like, okay, that's the value. It looks like, you know, and always squint. I forgot to mention, always squint the eyes like this. If you don't have the wrinkles right here, you're not squinting enough. <laughs> All right, so this is why you have those holes and the value. So you're basically doing like this. I'm not, if I'm looking at you, I'm trying to find a value. Boom, that's a value, okay? Or this, just if it's lighter. Uh, use this. You know, I used to use this a lot. Um, or you can do it on the with you know the subject, or you can point it to your you know your uh, mix that you just mix it on your palette and see is that the right value or not the right value. So this is tool number two. Um, uh, a lot of times you will see painters using this. This is not only um, viewfinder. That viewfinder has actually two holes right here and here. And that's why the reason why. Because always when we paint the values, we we'll always compare, we call it a relationship, right? The values need to be need to have a relationship between the values, basically. So what you do, you uh, find your uh, value that you just found and you know this is the right value or this is your anchor value and you put this hole right here and then you move this hole and you can do it by you know getting closer or getting further and put this hole on the value that you're studying and you will see it basically this gray plastic will isolate the rest of the colors make sure you're getting a right value because a lot of times if you have dark 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 your light lightest value in a, between the darks will be darker. It looks like darker. But if you isolate the darks from what you're trying to find, you will see the true value of that color, right? So you just put one, this, to relatively, or neighbor neighboring value, and this to the object that you're trying to find the value, and you will see true, true value. Just, if you have this finder, just try to practice using this two holes right here, here and here. That's why those two holes in, in this viewfinder isolate the colors to, to, just to see the value, right? You just look at the look at the value, you can compare it to with something else, just twisting like this or like that. And then it's like, well, I'm just looking at my wall and my canvas roll and I, it looks like from here, it looks like same values. But if I put this hole on my wall and this on my canvas, I can definitely see the difference. So my canvas is much, much like twice lighter than the wall. Uh, and that wall is just surrounded with the canvases. So it looks like the same value and it's not, all right? So use this. And another tool that I highly recommend, I have it all the time, 
in my bag, backpack when I'm going to paint. This is by Tiffin and it's called Black and White BNW Viewfinder Filter. Basically what you do, I have it on my neck all the time when I paint and especially when the values are really difficult to, to identify and I, all I do just instead of squinting I just look through and this will put all the views into gray scale. So basically you see just the gray scale. All the colors are eliminated, I mean isolated, not isolated, just removed or not removed, whatever. You just see everything in the gray scale, right? And it just, it is so easy. I'm looking right now on the wall in my canvas and it's definitely, the canvas is lighter. So using this, I'm using this a lot. Um, it's cost, I think it's like 70 bucks, not cheap, but it, you know, the worst of buying it. So this is, I'm not trying to sell any, I'm just showing you what to have, uh, what options to have. So the Tiffin black and white filter, black and white filter, viewfinder filter. Um, like this. All right, so I hope we learned today about the value. What is the value? I hope we learn, you know, the importance of value and I hope we learn how to practice the value. All right, so if you have any questions, go to my website, click to uh, con contact me, you know, send me a message. You can do it in, this, in uh, comments as well. If you're new to my channel and you uh, you know like the videos, please subscribe, please hit the like, and of course subscribe. That helps our channel to grow. And if you'd like to study with me, um, uh, please stay tuned. Um, it will be available really, really soon. I will start instead of finishing whole thing. Uh, I'm gonna probably finish portion, and you know so people can sign up and start. Um, you know, watching the videos and learning, uh, you will be able to actually connect with me when you, you're buying the course and connect with me and ask questions. I will be replying and working with you. Uh, this will give you, if you might, if you want to take my workshops, uh, I would probably encourage you to take the course first and then come to workshop. And so and so on. Uh, again, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just trying to help people to learn oil painting. All right, and if you are already subscribed, you know guys thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you very much and stay tuned for new videos let me know if you want to see demos or anything else uh this year by the way this year um we're going to easton um because i just um, received the invitation to easton it was i was accepted to easton so we'll be not only recording video but actually painting and see it from inside from easton um bass county um New Bern uh, Plain Air and some others. I have to uh, probably give up maybe four or five uh, Plain Air competitions uh, because I'm busy with uh, recording and uh, and studying. I just want to be more on um, educational side of it uh, and connect with collectors more than uh, just you know go and paint one of the competitions. Competitions are great things to, you know, to participate, to grow hundred uh, percent. It's boost you, uh, boost you as, you, as, you, as an artist to like paint more and more and more on a professional level, hundred um, um, percent. But again, if you're doing just that, that's great. Um, but I'm trying to do more on, you know, educational stuff. So I'm probably gonna give up some, some of those planers but i will keep you posted and i will shoot some videos as well so stay tuned and i'll see you next time Here we go.